The City of Lights hosted Glory for the third time in June with Glory 66 Paris. And for the second time, Glory featured not one, not two, but three world title fights. The world's premier stand-up combat league featured three defending champions going up against their number one ranked opponent in the division. She cannot stand where she's standing and Mexen already busted her open. It was an unforgettable night of dominant performances and devastating knockouts. On this edition, we'll rewind all three of the world title fights, plus the coming of age of welterweight phenom Hamisha. Glory 66 Rewind starts right now. In the fall of 2018, Glory signed the highly touted knockout artist, Hamisha. His debut at Glory 62 Rotterdam was the stuff dreams are made of as he delivered the quickest debut knockout in Glory history. He came to Paris wanting to make sure that was no fluke as he took on Adam Hadfield. Ready, fight! Three rounds, Hamisha in the white gloves, Hatfield in the black. You're gonna see Adam Hatfield really kind of pressure. He did, or stay long because he knows Hamisha's dangerous. He's got good power in his hands and his kicks. Ooh, that high kick man clicked Hatfield already. Hamisha gets knockouts and he gets them early. He's already got Hatfield backed in the corner, covering up. Oh, a nice oh, body oh, kick, oh, kick oh, and Hatfield oh, is down. Two, less than 30 seconds three, in round one. Four, and he timed that perfectly five, versus the punches six, of Hatfield. Seven gloves up. Eight. Let's see if Hamisha can finish him off here. He knows to target the body, almost got the head. Hatfield, he's going to swing. He's going to fire away. He's I, built British tough. Yeah, if I'm Hatfield, I'm moving forward. I'm not moving backwards. Fight. You can't really sit there. There's That's better. He's got to come forward. By moving backwards and staying in the ropes, it's just a good advantage for Hamisha. You can see that strike diversity of Hamisha. Punches, kicks, and knees. Hamisha is not concerned at all with Hadfield's offense. Just looking to land his shots. Yeah, there's that forward. No, no, oh, he's down. down. Another body Two, blow, and three, Hadfield may not get four, up from this one. Five, six, seven, eight. He nine. does get up. Oh, and they wave it off. They wave it off, and Hamisha. Two glory wins, two knockouts. And that's what he wants. He wants to show his dominant in this, this division. So now it's time to see Hamisha against the bigger names. Let's see what he can do. He's only 23 years old, but he looks like a world beater. And he's in perhaps the glamour division in glory, the welterweights. Yeah, he's in some tough division. He's going to have some tough fights coming up. But if he keeps fighting like this, we're going to see him fighting for titles very soon. So many fights, so many delicious, intriguing matchups for Hamisha and the welterweights. Unfortunately, Adam Hatfield was not one of them. Yeah, and you can see Hamisha really attacking the body. That was actually the knee that landed. I mean, he had a little bent knee, perfectly timed. And then you can see that knee land. Beautiful, it was a nice round knee. If it would have been long distance, it was a kick inside, he threw the knee. But then he started attacking that body, went right for that left hook. And that's the one that finished the fight. But you can see how good Hamisha is mixing his strikes. He threw some good kicks, some good hands, and some good knees as well. It was a left hand, almost an uppercut, right to the body. And Hatfield could not continue, according to our referee. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our referee, Toby Gerald, steps in and waves off this contest with an official time of just one minute, 35 seconds of that very first round, declaring your winner by technical knockout, Amisha! A new welterweight superstar has arrived as Hamisha delivered another knockout, his 28th in 40 professional fights. Up next, the first of our three title fights of the night when defending champion Artem Bahitov takes on number one ranked Donaghy Abena for the light heavyweight title.
just does everything so well. Box at a high level. His kicking is at a high level. And still, glory light heavyweight champion of the world. He's the number one light heavyweight contender in the world. Donaghy! Going downstairs, and those hurt him. Those hurt the bridge. Call me for the belt. For real, huh? Fuck it up. Hashtag. Grass, fuck Time now, ladies and gentlemen, for your headline bout of the evening. Five rounds for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Donaghy Abena versus Artem Vahita. The only thing I know what to do. Hard that hook to deliver and going downstairs and those hurt him. Where do you rate yourself? I rate myself number one. Well, he doesn't lack confidence, that's for sure. Put the belt. For real, huh? My name is Artem Vahitov, I'm a light heavyweight champion. He's one of these fighters that can really do it all. Moving his head, playing around, trying to find uppercuts. All ranges, all distances. Lines up, going out all the stops. And what makes him the best is more exciting than the athlete. He's finished. Oh, what a left high kick! He's the best closer in the business, any weight class. Once Vahitov has you hurt, it's just a masterpiece now. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. World title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Touch gloves if you like, push back. Abena has fought Judge. some of the biggest Judge. names in kickboxing, Joe, but he's never fought anyone quite as good as Vahitov. Yeah, Vahitov's fight. a special athlete, and you're gonna see that very shortly, the way he mixes everything really well. Starting with a high kick is Vahitov, the champ. Abena answers back down low. Abena known more for his power punches than his kicking. And we've seen Vahitov fight many power punchers in the past. And the way he beats them is with low kicks. Again, keep your eye on the right hand. That's the one that's been fractured multiple times, Vahitov. But you're going to see Vahitov play different games to protect it. He'll go southpaw sometimes, and he'll probably use his kicking game off the right side. There he uses his jab, and he'll probably mix his kicks. And now he's back as a southpaw. Good start for Abena. For a young guy like this, it's very important to get confidence early. Yep. And he's got to be first. He needs to stay active. He can't let Vahitov take control, especially with momentum. Once he gains momentum, it's really hard to shut him down. I don't think Vahitov's thrown a right hand yet. No, nope, that's what I'm saying. You're going to see him hide it really well. There's a right hook. But what about Vahitov's biggest weapons was the straight right hand. Yeah, but you'll see him develop everything else. You know, he may say, listen, I'm not going to throw it until I think I need to throw it. There he is switching southpaw like Joe mentioned. Just ate an uppercut, though. Good round one for the challenger. Yeah, Bain is doing well. And Great. if you Great. take anything from Vahitov's Great. last fight against Ilungitz, you've got to be first. You have to keep constant pressure on Vahitov because he's really good at countering. You've got to try to take that away from him by staying busy. Good body kick there from the champ. <laughs> Thing about championship experience is five rounds. Those last two rounds, 
No, really the, the toughest rounds. So let's see if Abena can manage that pace. He just took a nice left hook to the body. Jab to the body for Bahitov. Another uppercut landing for Abena. That's been his best strike, the uppercut. Good flowing combination work. You see Vahitov do that a lot. Punch upstairs with light punches and then mix in power shots. Round two, again, scheduled for five. Open scoring tonight. Here are the official judges' scores, all five, scoring it for Abena. That was a good first round. The question is, can he maintain this for four more? If it doesn't get a finish. Where's the explosion from Vahitov, which he was so famous for? Where he gets right into the thick of the things, the fire. Well, he's setting it up well. I think, you know, the hand being out a little bit, maybe he just wants to gain some comfort in there. Nice body kicks. They combined to throw 112 punches in round number one. There's a nice combo from the champ. Yeah, he's really liking the punches to the body. He's going head body a lot with his hands. And when your hands hurt and you're on the sidelines, what do you do? You work on your kicks. Yeah. And that's what it appears Vahitov has been doing. Yeah. Low kicks and high kicks. I really think that right low kick for Vahitov is going to be a good, good strike for him. Good chance. Vahitov wants Abena to let his power out so that he can pick up the pace in the later rounds. That's what you have to do with a power puncher. You don't want to open up. Well, Abena fights in a hard style way, but he doesn't get in there and brawl. He's looking to break guys down with those classic punches and low kick style. So when you say he's a great power puncher, he's not really technically a knockout puncher. No, he just really swings behind it. He's got good lead uppercuts. But I really like he's mixing his kicks a little bit more. Showing the involvement. He's still 21, so I'm sure every time he's in the ring, we'll see a, a new and improved fighter. Nice punch landed, and Vaitov covers up. Good low kick there for Vahitov. That was a southpaw, right? Always changing. Pena definitely improving a lot since we saw him with Duke. I really like his combination work and his mixing of strikes. There's a lot of people that will tell Abena, hey, listen, you're only 21. If this doesn't work out for you tonight, you're going to get another chance. And there are others that will say, hey, you've got to go get it now. You never know if you're going to get this chance again. Well, I think with Abena's style and his commitment to his training, that he'll definitely be back regardless. Great! Great! Well, if he can win this round as well, Vahitov will have to win three consecutive rounds or he loses his title. This is a close round. But we are not seeing the explosion from Vahitov, especially with his punches. Interesting to see how the judges saw that second round. That could change the entire strategy of this fight. Abena won all five judges scores in round one. He takes three in round two. So Vahitov will have to win the final three rounds or get a knockout. Nice spinning attack. Good jab there from Vahitov. Nice leg check, too. Well, if he was saving his energy, Joe, he's got to release it now, doesn't he? Good oh. uppercut. Beautiful. He went left hook to the body, left uppercut. Bain has got some nasty uppercuts. And you don't see Vahitov hold on too often, but that's what he just did. Yeah, Vahitov is good at, you know, playing the head-to-head -head style fight. It's good defense on mid-range. 
Lahitov working the body, Abena working the legs. If you're just joining us, this is the light heavyweight showdown between Artem Bahitov, the Russian who hasn't lost in four years, taking on a 21-year-old from Suriname, Donaghy Abena. Some big kickboxing names out of that country, the former Dutch colony, Tyrone Spong, Ernesto Hoost, Joe's favorite, Ismail Lunt, Andy Risty, and so many more. Joe, you're awfully quiet. What do you see? Yeah, I'm just analyzing the fight. It's such a, a good technical fight happening right now. My eyes are just locked onto this fight. I'm really liking Abena's jab, which is kind of keeping Vahitov at bay. So it's making Vahitov have to be creative the way he enters. So that's why he's coming in as a southpaw, having to use his head movement. Vahitov really liking that left kick. Throwing it at different levels. 45 seconds to go here in round three. Abena winning three of the five judges' scorecards in round two. And the impressive thing about Abena is every time we see him fight, he seems to put all his power behind things. So training for this five rounds, you see him not throwing power behind things. That's how you sustain the pace for five rounds. That comes with experience. So Abena definitely more experienced than his age. Bahitov struggled in his last title defense. It's Daniel Olunga. Doesn't look fantastic again here tonight either. Under 10 seconds to go in a must-win round for the champ. All five giving that round to Vahitov. So he's still alive, Joe. Needs to win the last two. Yeah, I think Abandon like he was in the first few rounds. He needs to be a little bit more active. He's letting Vahitov kind of come at him a little bit more now. You know, it's a similar situation to when Sinichai fought to Johnny Bestati, a young gun yeah. who won the first two rounds, I believe, but then it was Sinichai who started to slowly take over and won that fight three rounds to two. That's what championship experience is, to be able to early that weather storm and to be able to play your game in the later rounds. Nice uppercut, good combination from the challenger. Yep, that's what he needs. He needs to start putting more output. I'm trying to see if Bahitov will throw a right hand. We think he may have heard it again. He's fighting southpaw right now. What Abena's doing well also is he's not moving backwards against Bahitov. That's what he wants. He want, Bahitov wants you against the rope so he can kind of mix his levels and his punches. But with Donaghy continually firing back and not moving backwards, it's playing well for him. All Abena has to do is win either round four or five. And of course, not get knocked out. Easier said than done. Solid. It's the man whose last loss was April 2015. Good front kick for Bahitov. His right hand may be broken, or certainly not at 100%. Haven't seen him throw it this round at all, Joe. Yeah, no, even in the beginning of the fight, he threw it more as a right hook to follow up with his knees. But, yeah, it's got to be hurt, because every time he wants to throw a nice power rear straight, he goes to a southpaw. So from the orthodox, he likes it. Oh, good high kick. That caught Bahitov on the ear, and a beta. He's hurt him. Let's see how Abena reacts. Does he empty the tank or does he stay patient knowing there's one more round? Well, Bahitov appeared to be a little bit off balance when that kick landed, but no doubt it did land flush. Regardless, though, that's what Abena needed to, to get that round. Back to his uppercuts that he's really good with. And Vahitov fighting almost exclusively as a southpaw now. The right hand is not working. And that may spell his doom.
We'll soon see those judges' scores in round four, but it appeared to be around the challenger one. No, four the five. Maybe, am I crazy, Joe? Did you see Abena losing that round? No, I thought he landed the better, crisper strikes, especially with the damaging left kick that he landed. I would have given him a slight edge, that's for sure. <laughs> well, that builds the drama even more. It will all be decided in the last two minutes and 30 seconds as Abena goes downstairs with the left hand. Vahitov still in this fight, despite boxing basically with one hand. And he touched the right hand there, then immediately went to self-talk. Well, in boxing, we've seen it before. If a fighter breaks his hand, it hurts for a few rounds, but eventually becomes numb. Maybe that's happening. Well, you can see right away the style that Bahitov's using. When he's orthodox, he uses his jab and left hook, and he'll go to the body with it. Ooh, a nice high kick for Bahitov. When Bahitov goes southpaw, that's where he throws that left straight. I know it's cliche, but who wants it more? Two minutes to go, light heavyweight title on the line. Vahitov is hoping that glory comes to Russia later this year and that he can headline the card. But he doesn't want to do it as a challenger. He wants to do it as the champ. Vahitov now is hitting and moving, Great. stealing this Great. round. Abena needs to Fight. dig deep and put those combinations together, especially when he goes punch kick. Good left hand there connecting for Bahitov, and it shows you just how good he is that he's still in this fight without perhaps his best weapon. Yeah, this is the fight he likes, though, because he's hitting and moving. If Abena wants fight, a chance, fight. he's most successful when he's being first. Fight! Abena does not want to have any regrets. It's right there in front of him. Can he take it from the champ? Left hand lands for Bahitov. Yeah, it seems like Bahitov is stealing it. Let's see what Abena can dig deep and pull out of the hat. And again, Vahitov knows how to go five full rounds. Abena is slowing down, Joe. Yeah, I mean, looking back at that fight, I'm sure they're going to be really upset with the way they scored that fourth round. Well, he has a chance to remedy that right here. He can win it. Has Vahitov survived again? Many felt he lost to Daniel Alunga. I'm sure some will feel he lost this fight. But he's showing championship heart here in round number five. He glances up at the clock, 20 seconds to go. Break, break, break. Joe, he may have done it. Break. Vahitov may have come back after being down two rounds to none and won the final three. Yep, he's hitting, he's moving, he's staying defensive. Spinning heel kick, Abena waves oh. it off. We shall soon see. Let's jump into our highlights from this light heavyweight championship between Abena and Vahita. Fantastic first round for Abena. Stood in there, was the busier fighter. He was leading, being more aggressive. But Vahita, you see as a southpaw, was able to put good combinations together. The Vahita style of hitting and moving in the first few rounds was a little bit more difficult. But good round. I really like those combinations from Abena. I think we saw a lot of development and a lot of growth in him as a fighter. But championship experience is what it comes down to if you want this belt. The best head kick in that fight for Abena. And came down to this fifth round. Vahitov was the busier fighter hitting and moving. It just seemed like Abena lost that power and the energy in that fifth round. Here are the final strike statistics and Joe. Abena will look at this and say, how did I lose this fight if he did indeed lose it? Yeah, they're still very close, maybe one or two strikes, so it's not a big difference, but regardless, he matched the pace with the champ. Strikes by zone. You know, very even when you look at the fight, but a big difference in the biggest score differential would be the leg kicks of Abena. So we got to be really impressed with the way Abena st stood in there and fought with Vahitov. I mean, you see even Vahitov in the ring doesn't look very happy. And I got to think that his hand played a little bit of a, an issue in this fight. Just looked down in between rounds, didn't seem his happy, confident, and motivated self. Now in the ring with Tim Hughes for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard.
They give us back a split decision. They score this bout. 48-47, Abena. 49-46, Vahita. And our three remaining judges have it 49-46, 48-47, and 48-47 for your winner by split decision. And still, light heavyweight champion of the world, Artem Vajeta. Once again, by the slimmest of margins, Artem Vahitov defends for the fifth time. Coming up later, the welterweight world title is on the line when Cedric Dumbe looks to defend against number one ranked Alim Navigev. But up next, the super bantamweight championship between the unstoppable Anissa Mexen and the number one ranked Sophia Olofsson. for five rounds for the Super Bantamweight Championship of the World, Sophia Olofsson and Anissa Maxson. Sophia the Wolf Olofsson. Uppercut there from Olofsson. Just flying and connecting. Push forward. I like always. As she continues to throw punches nonstop. I would venture to say there's no one who can deliver the output and the energy that Olsen brings. Everyone is impressed by what Mexen has done in this sport. Oh, and a big straight, almost push kick or a front kick right to the jaw. Oh, and a right hand connects for Mexen. One of the best punches of the fight. Nice one, two there for Mexen. 11-time French champion, five-time European champion. She is the reigning and defending Super Bantamweight Champion of the World. She is Amissa. Maxson! Ready, fight! Super Bantamweight title on the line. We'll exchange kicks right away. And Olofsson will try and impose her will on Mexen, who you would think would try and answer with counter strikes. Yeah, and 
Sophia Olofsson said her kicks are gonna be the difference. Already you see her being patient and, and trying to kick more, but she's really known for blasting the straight punches. Because you're gonna see that in and out style of Mexican. You're gonna see her attack, create her distance and move. Stop. And this Stop. is the range here in that clinch range where I feel it could, Stop. you know, go Sophia's way. She's gotta take advantage of pressing in against the champ. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to beat Mexen at range. You've got to get inside, catch her in the pocket. Olsen being a little more patient than I thought she'd be. Well, it is a five-round fight. So she's going to have to be a little bit more intelligent. Oh, she cannot stand where she's standing, and Mexen already busted her open. A cut Stop. over the right Time. eye of the challenger, and they'll stop the fight right away to Stop. look at it. Wow, she just makes that head kick out of nowhere. And Nissa Mexen says some of her favorite techniques and her best ones are their footwork and that left kick. No, no, no. The doctor will look at Only this cut. And here was the high kick that caused it. Boom, oh, nice close range head kick too. I mean, it looks like the cut's just on the outside of the eye so the blood won't be dripping into the eye. So hopefully they let this fight continue. Either way, it is certainly an uphill climb now for Olafson. The letter continue. But a warning fight. shot fired by Mexen. Let's see if this wakes Olafson up. It could either wake her up or slow her down. Because Sophia needs to pressure, and if she's never been cut before, it might be something new for her. Fight! Oh, left hook catches Olofsson, and this has been a brutal beatdown so far in round one for Mexen. Yeah, Mexen's really showing the power she has. She's got really good power in the hands. Now she's letting it go. Fight. The game plan was supposed to be simple. They'll look at the cut again. It was supposed to be Olofsson pressure as hard as she could, and they'll wave it off. They will wave it off. A TKO victory for Anissa Mexen. She made it look so easy against one of the most decorated Muay Thai fighters of all time. And absolutely, it was so impressive that Olofsson thought she had, bad, had the advantage in the kicks, but Anissa Mexen showed, hey, my left kick is one of the best in the games. And she landed that beautiful one to get that cut and finish. Mexen promised, at least we asked her what was the percentage that Olofsson could beat her in France, and she said zero. She has no chance. And that's how it looks after not even one round. Yeah, she, she's a confident fighter, and that's why she's so successful. You know, getting her 99th professional win, that's, that's crazy. 99 and four. That's Mexen's record. Eight and one in glory. Can anyone stop this fighter? Your silence speaks volumes, Joe. Let's take you back to the shot that caused the cut. Yeah, and it was just that close range head kick. She didn't really go upstairs much, and then she kind of surprised Olofsson with that head kick. Quick range, quick switch, perfectly timed and landed. And then right away, she saw the cut and started, kept him pressuring. And then again, it looked like the blood was going to go around the eye of Olofsson, but with power punches that Mexen was showing, rocked her here. And at that point, the blood started rushing down the eye, and the doctors had to stop the fight. But you can see that power that Anissa Mexen shows she has. It was kind of like that fight she had with that rematch against Menezes. She kind of went out there, blasted her out, and just showed her dominance. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our referee, Tobias Gerald, steps in and waves off this contest at the recommendation of our ringside doctor with an official time of two minutes and six seconds of that very first round, declaring your winner by technical knockout. And still, Bantamweight champion of the world, Anissa Maxson.
In her most dominating performance to date, Anissa Mexon gets career victory number 99 and further cements herself as the greatest woman stand-up combat fighter of all time. Two down, one to go. Up next, the welterweight championship is on the line when Cedric Dumbe looks to defend against number one ranked Alim Naviev. for five rounds for the welterweight championship of the world and a rematch of a hotly contested split decision in Rotterdam last year. It's Alim Nabiev and Cedric Dumbe. Alim, the professor, Nabiev. <laughs> already beaten former world champions. His tricky style just seems to give people a really difficult time. I'm smarter than him. I'm, I'm the best, you know. I'm so strong for him. Sorry, man. <laughs> Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. World title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Push back. Judge, judge, judge. The one man that has figured Dumbe out is Aline Nabia. Has Dumbe now figured him out? He says he has and will prove that he is indeed the best. Fight! Welterweight title on the line. Five rounds in Paris. Here we go. Dumbe said he's not going to give Nabia a chance to breathe. And right away, you already see Nabiev using those knees. Couple jabs there from the champ. Dumbe predicts a knockout here, Joe, but it's so hard to hit Nabiev, that last punch, punch notwithstanding. But already you see Nabiev being really tricky with his stances, moving backwards, okay. switching stances. Fight! But already he's really going after those knees. A lot of energy in the crowd here tonight, surprisingly. A large contingent pulling for Nabiev, the professor. Oh, and they 
exchanged in the middle of the ring. And look at this. It's the back of the head. Stop, stop, stop. Whoa, time, time. Yabi yeah, hitting multiple neutral. times behind neutral. the head. You, back of the head. Back of the head. Well, he was trying to hey, punch around. Public warning, you I do guess that again, I'll take Nichols. the point. Okay, back of the head, you cannot attack that. Okay. Are you okay to continue? Dube did not like that. You never turn your back on your opponent, but at the same time, you never hit your opponent behind the head. Time in. Fight. We most famously saw that also in Paris, I believe, when Myrtle yep. Grunhart knocked out Haru Gregorian from behind, but he hooked the hand and actually hit him in the face. It's just a lot of emotions on oh, the right hand fight. for Dube. Good pressure from Doom Bay using his ring control. Oh, a nice left hook with a counter punch from Nabiev. Boy, Nabiev going right with Doom Bay this time. A bit surprised? Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we saw that he did against Haru Kogorian. But do you see how tricky Doom Bay is to hit. So sometimes you do have to sit in the pocket and try to exchange to get Doom Bay. In his loss to Gregorian, Nabiev didn't really have a coach a couple weeks before. He split ways with his trainer. This time he's got one of the best in the business, Dennis Crowell, who also trains famously Rico Verhoeven. Couple knees now from the Azerbaijani. Yep, that was one of my keys in their first fight. In that third round, Nabiev landed some solid knees. Now he's picking it up. He's continuing where he left off with them. Oh, nice right hand there for Nabiev. You can already tell this is going to be a barn burner. And it, you just see how technical of a fight it is. The ability of Nabiev to switch stances, the way Doom Bay is entering and throwing his power punches. This is the highest level possible, ladies and gentlemen. Another knee there for Nabiev. Great, great. Stop. And that'll do it from a wild and woolly round one. And a tough one to score as well. Some good early action from Cedric Dubé, but this is where he had the hand and turned his back, waiting for Paul Nichols to step in. But I mean, a lot of emotions. Nabiev could have been a good strategy to kind of get him off his guard, trying to get him frustrated. But yeah, that was all back of the head Jeez. those last two. I'm a little bit surprised Nichols didn't just go ahead and take a point away. There was three clear hits yeah, behind the head. I'm surprised. But again, defend yourself at all times. And when someone's punching you and you turn your head, you know, it's kind of, it's a way of avoiding punches, which is also not the right thing to do either. Yeah. We'll soon see with our opening right. open scoring how the judges saw that first round. It was a tight one. All five giving it to Doombe. Good spinning back for us from Nabiev. Nabiev switching stances. He'll go south, Paul, now back to orthodox. Yep, always changing. And he can throw all of his strikes from both stances. So far, the pressure from Dubé has been paying off for him. Not, not landing anything clean, but scoring with it. Good outside low kick from Nabiev. He's not just kicking to score, kind of like Dubé did there, kicking with power. Good jab, and another jab for Dubé. Stick and move. I don't think this is the fight you want to showboat in. And you see the, the hand in the defense of Nabiev using more of like a Philly shell style. But he's, get, he's getting hit every time he comes forward, though. Oh, they'll open up. Oh, that man stunned him. That man stunned Nabiev. He lost his footy. And a left hand connects for Dubé again. He looks wobbly on his legs. The new and improved Dubé striking again. Now, 
Zverev just too content sitting in the pocket, exchanging. And another left, snaps Nabiev backwards. Again, Dumbe showing his power. And a no solid one. jab. Sorry, Joe, no one has knocked down Nabiev. Dumbe may do it in a minute. Good uppercut. Right, and Nabiev right, right. holding on. Yeah, he needs to kind of Fight. regroup himself. Dumbe's got to get back to that jab. He keeps popping Nabiev's head with it. And when Dumbe starts throwing his power shots and combinations, that's when he gets his finishes. Another jab. Oh, and a left hand connects for Nabiev. Man, that left jab of Dumbe is, is laser point right now. Good left hook for Dumbe. Boy, this is good stuff. Yeah, this is an incredible fight. quite like that. Dubé not only retained his title, Joe, but he has sent a message to the world of kickboxing that hey, he may be indeed the best pound for pound there is. Oh my God, Dubé. Wow is all I can say to that. Man, you gotta see how hard it is to hit Nabiev, never been knocked down. And he just got one of the nastiest knockouts we've seen in, in that welterweight division. Wow. Hey, let's give Nabiev credit, though. He got up from that first knockdown, which nearly took his head off. But it was all over after that first shot, and he polished him off just seconds later. Incredible performance. He goes right to his family and gives him a big hug. That's his mom. Credits her with all his success. He is in tears right now. Yeah, you got to be emotional. You're fighting at home. Your family's here. This whole stadium's in there on their feet. And with a knockout like that, I don't know who's going to be next for Doom Bay. But just incredible, the way he's mixing things up. I was just so impressed with that jab. He kept pumping and snapping it. And it was because of that jab that he was able to mix his other punches. And that's what got him to finish. And don't forget, this was a rematch. Dube lost the first fight. No doubt about this one. Round one. This is where Nabiev started to get under Dumbe's skin a couple of shots behind the head. Yeah, you see that little laugh, that little smile, but he was ready to throw that right hand after, and that kind of woke him up. And you can see snapping that jab because he knew it was landing so well. And this is when he gets upset and starts going to work. You see him in there, he ate some shots, but he stayed in there anyways, and he had delivered some big punches of his own. And you can see him just looping those big punches, Nabiev taking them. Everyone's still on their feet here, and that was the money shot. The big right hand to the jaw. Yeah, even though he was in the clinch to me, boom, he just came over with that right hand. We saw a similar knockout from Dubé against Tongchai. They try to grab his head, clinch a knee, but then he throws these looping punches. And boom, that right hand followed the left hook on the way down. And let's just hope Nabiev is okay from that one. But that was a nasty KO from Dubé. Vinny had this as a pick of fight, Joe. As far as a world championship performance, is this one of the best you've seen? Yeah, absolutely. I was one of the people calling this an even match. I thought it was gonna go to the decision. But man, Dubé, Dubé silenced me. I respect that power and I'm a believer in the best now. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event of the evening comes to an abrupt end with an official time of two minutes, 48 seconds of that second round and ends by knockout for your winner and still welterweight champion of the world, Cedric Dumbay.
here to present the belt. Glory Chairman Pierre Andoran and our Managing Director of Sport, Mr. Core Hammers. In another of a series of dominating title performances, Cedric Dumbay is becoming arguably the best pound-for-pound stand-up combat fighter in the world. This was his fourth knockout in his last five fights, and he shows no signs of slowing down. As he likes to say, the best is yet to come. That will do it for this edition of Glory Rewind. Up next, Glory returns to the United States for Glory 67 Orlando, highlighted by the featherweight world title between champion Pet Panamru as he goes up against number two ranked Anbar Boynazarov. It all comes your way on Friday, July 5th. Check time and date in your area. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com. Follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Glory Rewind. Are you ready for Glory?